We came together as a community to be open and welcoming to everyone. It was just amazing. Everybody we started out around. with 50 yeah. people coming, and before we knew it, we had 100 and then a couple of hundred. The interest in the Jewish community was way beyond anything we could anticipate. We had a group of space, and the board decided, well, we needed to do a new building. We had a lot of people who were involved, wanted to be involved. There's nothing better for a Jewish congregation than having a lot of people who want to be involved. These were giant women and men, the founders of MICA, and they knew about leadership, and they knew about vision, and they knew about this community of Nashville. This idea of equality and righteousness and justice, and those are really hallmarks of the prophet Micah for whom this congregation is named. Those were there from the beginning and I think they still exist today for the congregation. This is the kind of place where we don't judge, we just love. We have a lot of gratitude and I think a lot of people feel that gratitude also for the people who helped create it. your house. And then we got together and had a uh, meeting at Vanderbilt kind of Plaza and we had, as I recall, 80 family units showed up for the meeting. We got seating in there for maybe about 50 people. We know we're going to have more people than that. And I said, Dick, you don't have enough seats in this room. And Dick says, no. He says, we've got enough seats. It makes it look like we weren't expecting as many people when we bring in more seats. <laughs> <laughs> Remember that it was about 60 family units out of the 80 ended up staying with it and joining the congregation. When the meeting started, y'all divided up the responsibilities. And you were in charge of fundraising, and you were in charge of members, and you had the big job of being in charge of doing all, all of the fiscal responsibilities yeah, yeah. Of, of building buildings, two of them, rebuilding the first one and, and building this one. It was a very quick process from the, the first meeting at our house until we were a sanctioned congregation and we were looking for you know a building and moving on. The property that was found uh, for rent was in Bellevue and oh, yeah. the disco it was a yeah. former disco and it had the crystal ball. Mm -hmm. It was just fantastic. <laughs> The day we signed the lease, the sprinkler system went off and flooded the place, and um, but we got through that. Our first High Holy Days were in September of that year, and up until that point, from March until September, we had congregants who were fluent, well, let's well, not say fluent, <laughs> and we just took turns. whether they could speak and Hebrew or not. But, but they could read Hebrew. They, but they could hold a service. Yeah. So each Friday night and Saturday, we had services, even though we didn't have a rabbi. The very first service, Dick lit, as a matter of fact, and it was, do you remember, it was outside? It was the last service I ever led, because I didn't know a word of Hebrew, and <laughs> they didn't fire me from that, I quit. <laughs> <laughs> Marty Rosenberg suggested we have name tags mm -hmm. for the members. Yeah. And I said, it's a good idea, will you make them? And she did. The name tags of the members permitted us to then recognize those who were coming to visit, to look at who are you guys, would I fit in here? And it gave all of us an opportunity to talk to yeah. them, to uh, befriend them, and all of those things that would ultimately attract them as members. We're so excited that this small group could accomplish such a thing that we actually all went to services every Friday night. It was just amazing. It was really exciting, but really hard work. And I did the bookkeeping and 
answering the phone and washing the dishes. <laughs> she kept both floor. sets of books. It was <laughs> amazing. <laughs> if the floor needed vacuuming, somebody grabbed the vacuum cleaner. Whoever was there did whatever needed Absolutely. to be done. It was all of us. And it was it participatory. Was that way the, yeah, it was very participatory. It, it was ours, as opposed to joining an existing temple and your new member. We made it happen and, and uh, enjoyed every minute of it. It was a new enterprise, and it was more than a business, but it was worrying about if anybody was going to show up and worrying about the staffing and, and worrying about if you're going to have a crowd for the services, and if you didn't have more people on Friday night this week than you had last week, you may or may not have been being successful. In the first High Holy Days, D hired the choir master. Ever since that time, Music at Micah has been one of the one of the outstanding features of this congregation. Sure. A lot of congregations are you make it or break it based on the yeah. spiritual leader. And we had somebody who was very popular, and he had the entrepreneurial spirit as well. Young and energetic. Young and energetic. His philosophy was the same as the philosophy of the founding members of the congregation. He kind of and personified the, congregation but, like that. Right, he did. So Rabbi Cantor, uh, in due process, uh, was approved by the congregation and he was approved by the rabbinical association and each and every member of the fraternity said okay and he's a likable personality so that was enough uh, to get the base together. I was the rabbi of the Ox Memorial Temple in Chattanooga. I remember when I called the placement director in New York and I said, I'm planning to leave and I want to put my name in uh, as a candidate for this brand new split off congregation in Nashville. And he said, you're crazy. And I said, well, to you it's crazy, but I know those 40 or 50 people. And it's not just 40 or 50 people, it's 40 or 50 leaders who have vision of what they want Micah to be. Everything was done by the members. So if you wanted the room and all the chairs reset for services for Shabbat, guess who did it? It was the membership. So that was a challenge, but it was one of the great energies of that experience of that time was everyone was part of everything. No one ever said to me, well, 50 years ago when my father or grandfather was temple president, that's the way we did things. We didn't have that. We were creating from nothing. And that was a challenge, but boy, was it fun. Ultimately, they created this thing that we called the Micah Miracle, which in a lot of ways was just that, to turn an, a vision and an idea uh, into what the congregation has become. They were able to pull an idea in the minds of Dick and Howard and Jerry uh, into a reality for people that changed the whole Jewish world of Nashville.